Hey everyone, my name is Chris Sear. I'm joined with founder Tim O'Neill, and our goal is to break down basic mechanical components for you um, and do a series of different things on, on mechanics. And today we're gonna go over how a carburetor works. And we're also gonna do another video a bit of how we uh, are doing at our rallies and give you guys a chance to learn from some of our mistakes. So join us for our new series on breaking down the mechanics. So Tim, uh, having a bunch of experience as a mechanic, um, obviously chose to use a carbureted engine and he's gonna teach us what that means and why he's using it and get a little bit into the breakdown of, of how this component works. So yeah, Chris, uh, <clears throat> the reason I like carburetors, they're old and I can fix them. I see that how they work. Um, carburetors have been on engines for over a hundred years. A lot of people would rather see fuel injection is the, is the new way. So it's all about delivering fuel to an engine. An engine needs uh, roughly 14 to one um, air fuel ratio. So 14 parts of air for one part of fuel. So the air comes in the top of the carburetor and the carburetor limits the amount of air, uh, fuel going in depending on the throttle position and a few other things. So it's a pretty basic setup. Fuel is pumped to the engine at low pressure, uh, pumped to the carburetor at low pressure through these two ports. And um, that's regulated by a fuel pressure regulator and I use an electric fuel pump. So when the fuel comes in, it goes in inside the carburetor. There's a float like your toilet. The fuel fills up and it fills up to a point about this height of this plug hole. And when the, when the fuel is full, uh, on the float bowl is full, then this shuts off the fuel entering. So it's a constant fuel comes in, float goes up, shuts off the fuel coming in, just like your toilet. Water comes in, the float goes up, shuts the water off. So the problem that I had um, on my carburetor was um, through a couple different problems, I didn't notice the fuel pressure was too much. So if you have a carburetor and it's supposed to run at six or seven pounds of fuel pressure, I had nine or a little more than nine pounds of fuel pressure. That fuel pressure is going to overwhelm the needle and seat or the valve that stops fuel coming in. It's not really capable of stopping more than seven pounds of fuel pressure. So that's what happened. Too much fuel pressure filled up the bowl too much and then the vent, the fuel came into the vent inside the vent and filled inside the carburetor and with that much fuel in there all it took was a backfire and uh, the way I started it and it caught on fire so the fuel this is black here because there was a fire here uh, I managed to put it out quick but uh, it's still uh, fire extinguisher dust in here and there's old fuel so um, we're gonna take it apart explain what we're doing um, so put the, some new gaskets just to be clear, so this is the, where the toilet bowl action is yeah. effectively? Yeah, so yeah. we can take this out. This is a, a, how you adjust the uh, height of the float level. So the, the fuel level is measured with, um, by take, when the engine's running, you take this screw out, and if you can't see it, it's a little tougher. My yeah. assistant will be taking that out, <laughs> Mr. Sear. So you take out the brass plug when it's running and fuel when it's the right height comes to the bottom of that hole. So you'd back this off. So now I'm gonna just show you that what it looks like. This is the needle in the seat. So fuel comes in the top hole and it, and it comes out the bottom hole into the fuel. So this is the needle in the seat that the float lifts this up and shuts the fuel coming in. So this was the problem the extra fuel pressure, uh, this could not stop the fuel coming in because it's only just a little tiny needle. So we'll replace that. And that's really um, what I want to talk about is these carburetors, they're pretty reliable, but they require a constant adjustment. They require, as you can tell, sensitive on fuel pressure. Um, the benefit of a carburetor is very simple. Uh, I like them. Um, it, my period, my historic car it, it came with these type of carburetors and I like to keep things as original as possible. 
They, they have fuel injection now that it looks like a carburetor, but it's electronic with a computer. I'm a little old school. I'm not really uh, good at computers, so if I had fuel injection, I would have to have a laptop to tune it, and I'd rather just get my screwdriver out and tune it myself. Plus, it's a lot more fun for me. So maybe let's talk about the basic components that we have here. So we have fuel coming in, and in this section is called the float bowl. The float bowl. Want to take that off? Sure. Okay, so we have a primary and a secondary. So this carburetor, this is the left side. This would be the front. So we could just, uh, this has uh, gaskets, the gasket for the fuel bowl, and there's also a metering block. So you see this is the fuel bowl and this is the metering block. The metering block takes the fuel and as you notice it's not tight because I already had this apart. Because if you take your carburetor apart without draining the fuel you're going to have a mess. It's full of fuel. So I emptied the fuel out and I took this apart. And so doing it on a nice table would not be a great idea? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't bring this into your living room. Um, you could have domestic issues after that. So, taking the carburetor out of the float bowl off, the other thing is each one of these bolts have a gasket. If you don't have the gasket, it'll leak fuel there. Here's the float bowl. So this float comes up, and when it gets up enough, it shuts off. But you see, this is adjusted wrong, so I'll adjust it to the point where it may be... It's supposed to be adjusted when the engine's running, but I just thought I'd... I'd show you how to do it with the float off. You can tell now that float would be about like that. And if when the fuel comes up, it shuts off that valve. So, you, and you can see where the little hole is. On the far side where that, where that plug where is. That plug. So it's that's how you adjust the fuel level. Okay. And you, you loosen the screw and then you turn the nut. And the turning the nut brings the needle and seat up or down, depending on what you need. Inside here, um, this is the float bowl gasket. These things are not really usable. Again, reusable. You can see this one's already broken and it's fairly new. So we have another one, black one instead of blue. Then we have uh, inside the metering plate, we'll take that off. And then there's another gasket here that so the metering plate allows fuel to go from the fuel bowl in through the small ports into the body of the carburetor. These are main jets. When you want to change the fuel, uh, the richness or leanness of your engine, you put a bigger jet in, that makes it richer. Smaller jet, less fuel, leaner. So, at higher altitudes, you'd put a smaller jet because you have less air, you need less fuel. So this is how they tuned it, changing the jets. Nowadays, with fuel injection, you just get on your computer and change the, the amount of current that's going through your injectors. This here is those mechanical. Are, those are the jets. Those are the jets, yeah. These jets, I think I had on there, they're 74s. I had that from Mount Washington. Uh, I leaned it out a little bit because I was racing at Mount Washington. Most of my racing is done around sea level to 2,000 feet. And the other thing we have is the power jet. This is a little, this, this here is the power jet. So it, it gives you, it's, it's enrichment. So it gives you a little bit more, when you get onto it, it gives you a little more fuel flow. So this power jet is a, it has a certain size and that allows more fuel. This here is uh, a little plastic um, uh, diverter type of thing. So when you're fuel, when you're ripping around like doing rally driving, the fuel sloshing around in the fuel bowl will squirt up through here, which is what happened to me because of too much pressure. Without this, it's when you slam on the brakes, it's easy for the fuel to slosh up through this tube, and that's also a problem. That's something that Holly, this is a Holly carburetor. This has come out. And you'll see on the back side of the metering all these little, all these little um, passages. And each one of these needs to be clean, and each one of these needs to flow. So I have to check each one. And I usually check with using uh, some carburetor cleaner and a, um, with a nozzle on it. 
And you, you got to be careful when you when you stick the nozzle and then you squirt it. Like this one right here is pointing right at my eye. So you, you've got to be careful about when you squirt something in the hole, it could come right back at you. So the metering... Well, how would those get dirty? What would happen? Well, remember the air filter, all the air gets sucked in the top. Well, if you have the air filter leak or the gasket leak, or in our situation, we're racing on dirt roads, there's little specks of dirt that can get down in there and... Um, so dirt can get in through around the air filter at times. Dirt can come in if your fuel filter isn't very good. Um, I've seen where people change the fuel line or change the carburetor and they just some, they get dirt in the system. You know, you have to be very careful when you're working on fuel injection. Uh, so over this in the engine is typically a big circle air filter. Yes, the right. air filter is gonna, is, is vital to keep um, the dirt out of these little tiny passengers. So that's, you know, that is another issue with carburetors. Uh, there's there's a big, probably a bigger chance of getting dirt in there than maybe fuel injection. Fuel injection and air filters are possibly better in some ways. So what is this block called again? It's called the metering block. A metering block. And there's one for the front and one for the rear. So this now is... gaskets on both sides? Yes, the gasket on this one is... Um, that goes around the power valve. These are made out of, mm, I don't know what kind of gasket material. You can see they've been used, right? Oh, so you can't really use them. And then you should always match up the new one to make sure that you have the right number of holes. Okay. You gotta turn it around and make sure, because sometimes we'll turn the whole thing around and make sure that you're not seeing blue oh. or black. So I'm missing. Okay, so you're missing a hole, so then you flip it around. Huh. <laughs> and that's how easy it would be to screw that up. Yeah, okay, I see that They're now. different. Same with the bowl gasket. Okay. The other thing on the bowl gasket is at the bottom, these little holes are the fuel that uh, holds for the fuel for the accelerator pump. So when you give it, quickly give it gas, are these? this pumps, the accelerator pump is on the bottom of the fuel bowl. So when you give it gas quickly, um, open the throttle, this will squirt fuel into the engine. There's two squirters for the front, two squirters for the rear. When you, when you hit the gas suddenly, this pump squirts, so it gets its fuel from there through that hole. So if your accelerator pump don't work, and then you look, you see that gasket is hammered. Yeah. A little... Little. So that was interfering with that too as well. So wow. the thing I like most about carburetors is I can see what's wrong. You know, that one has a bad hole, uh, has a hole in it. That gasket was split at the top. Uh, I might have found a piece of oh, dirt wow. in there. Um, a bad gasket, a dirt. Um, it, you know, I think once you understand carburetors, it's actually... Uh, you can start to diagnose your issues. It's, it's way easier, yes. Huh. Okay. So now where are we at? And, and that's the actual carburetor now. All right, well, I want to show, yeah, the, uh, the body of the carburetor, when they say it's a 650, 750 CFM, that's cubic feet a minute. So that's the amount of air that can go through this carburetor. And that's dictated by the size of these holes. So this is a four barrel, primary, primary and secondary. So when you're driving down the road in light throttle, you're only ever using the primary. But when you, when you go more than half throttle, the secondaries kick in. So primary and secondary. So there's a, this is called a four barrel carburetor. And that's four Venturis or four V. And that's 650 CFM, which means if you add up all the size of these holes, it'll It'll, they already figured out how much airflow can go through there. So when you want a bigger engine... And this goes into the engine. This is what's delivering air and fuel right. to your actual engine. Exactly. So we can tip this upside down because we don't have any gas in it. So the other circuit is the idle circuit. So um, when you're sitting there engine idling, low RPM, it, Fuel will travel through the metering block, uh, and it doesn't go through the main. It doesn't go through the main jets. It goes through another circuit, and that circuit is 
is controlled by this adjustment and the fuel you can see in here if you look carefully that this screw when you screw it in and out it changes the amount of fuel going through and then that squirts in that right at the right where the throttle plate opens there's a little slot you might not be able to see and that slot allows the air and fuel to bypass the throttle plate so when the throttle plate shut it still has a little tiny bit of fuel squirting in there to make the engine sit there and idle. So you adjust the idle mixture with these two these screws on the side. So we'll do that when we get it running. I'll be able to get it, adjust it, and then I'll back it off and it'll be kind of rich and I'll screw it in, it'll be a little lean and I'll, I'll back it out to that right spot. So we have the idle circuit, we have the, the idle, oh, well, we start from the beginning. We have the fuel delivery circuit float. We have the accelerator pump circuit, which pumps fuel in when you're giving it the gas. We have the idle circuit, which allows the engine to run at low speed. We have the main jets, which deliver the amount of fuel flow to uh, the Venturi in the center of the carburetor. We have the enrichment circuit, which is the power valve, which when you give it a lot of gas and it has more vacuum, it opens that valve up. So now um, the other thing I want to show is how the accelerator pump circuit works. There's a little, this little pump, when you give it gas, there's a cam on the, on the uh, accelerator pump. That little cam allows yeah, you can hold that up. Orange. So when I give it gas, that pushes down on that pump by the cam. And you can change those cams. You can see this little pink plastic. You can turn it around. You can adjust it so you can have more accelerator at the end, like right from idle. Or if you want to make it so it, it starts accelerating later than that. So you can fully adjust this mechanical um, cam by taking that screw out and flipping that over and you see there's three holes, there's three options. So this was effectively the, the quickness at which you're pushing the gas pedal, the delivery of fuel, yes. is that's gonna, yep. that's, will control that. You can change that, you can adjust that, you can adjust the height here. Uh, everything is adjustable, you just gotta know how to, what you're doing. And that is the primary This is the primary circuit, yes. Circuit. This is the two of the front two barrels of the four barrel. Got it. And then so there's a whole new system, same system on the rear to manage the two barrels at the back. Right. The right. secondary circuit. And that will have different size jets. They'll have the same power valve, different size jets, little different circuit, but it's on this carburetor they're almost the same. So where does the fuel, the fuel comes in here at the top? Okay, so when we're running, when we go above idle, we increase the air volume going past here, and this is called the Venturi, and the Venturi effect says when air passes through a small, when you change the orifice and make it a smaller area, air will increase speed, and it also puts a low pressure area, and it'll draw fuel through these little tube, emulsion tubes. There's a, a, a series of tubes inside the carburetor that have air, and so it mixes the, the fuel in with the air right here. So at, when this is running, you can see in there when you rev the engine, it's like, looks like a little bit of a garden hose. It's sucking the fuel out of the bowl through the metering, through the main jets, into these venturis, and then it's mixing with the air coming in. So what's different on a fuel injector, they would have an injector that's electrically fired most of the time, and that would be as the air is going by and injects fuel in. This is carburetor is drawing it in through the Venturi effect. And so as when you open the throttle, those the backside releases the fuel and air mixture, and that is what is also the, what pulls more through the top Venturi. Yes, the, the engine, remember the engine has vacuum. This engine is made so when the piston goes down, the intake valve is open. It's sucking, always sucking air in the engine. 
So the air being sucked into the engine going past the Venturi is what's pulling the fuel into the engine. So it's made so the engine runs lean at the bottom when, you, when you're idling and as you increase the engine speed and the airflow, it increases in the amount of fuel flow. And it's done all mechanically. So there's a lot that you can manipulate. You don't need a computer, you just need to understand the basic physics of what's happening and, and there's adjustment screws for most of this. So you just kind of break down issues that you might have. Yes, and, and it's very simple. Once you understand carburetors, it's simple. There's not everybody gets it. Uh, fuel injection is easier. You bolt it on, you program it, and, and it works. If you can't fix it, really, unless you have a computer. Uh, some mechanical fuel injection exists on older cars. Uh, this was simply a decision that I made because uh, the engine, the person that built my engine, he liked carburetors. But I'm not saying it's a perfect solution, obviously. Sometimes we have fires. But that's what you're comfortable with. And I like it. Um, it works for me. And um, it's, I try my, vin my version of vintage rally car is keep as many things as standard as possible. I, I didn't want to have fuel injection because, well, they hadn't invented it for another 30 years after this. But your goal is to have fun, and part of having fun going rallying is getting to tweak and modify and change. Monkey with my carburetor all the time. Right. Yeah. So um, join us for the next video where we talk about what happened, how this caught on fire, and we talk a little bit about the rally that we just went to. So join us for that next video.